Hello and welcome to part two of my Freddy Krueger furnish room diorama. An introduction and part one can be found on YouTube and uh, part one described the making of the base and the background, the walls and etc. This part is mainly going to focus on the furnace itself, how it was constructed and um, just some features of it okay so to begin with the furnace itself uh, is made from quite a thick um, styrene card uh, shaped and cut um, and reinforced at the bottom and at the top corners uh, and also down the edges with uh, right angled pieces of, of styrene card and styrene rod just to give it some rigidity the actual size uh, the height and the um, breadth and etc was very unscientific I wanted it to be approximately the size of my Freddy Krueger figure and he is um, roughly 11 inches tall it's the screaming figure of uh, Freddy the vinyl figure what I did was uh, as I say not very scientific I just got an approximate height which is around about 10 and a half 11 inches high and uh, the bulk um, I just kind of guesstimated to get, once I was happy that it had the right width and bulk uh, and depth and um, once that was all cut out, all stuck together and as I say reinforced, then it was given a, an overall spray of black uh, and then sprayed some overspraying with um, gun metal just to give it this kind of steel look to it. Stains uh, and uh, washes given to um, make it look a little more authentic. The door that you see, the furnace door, I have constructed hinges and a handle, but it doesn't open. It was never intended to open. Now you may uh, decide that you want yours to open, that's fine. Um, as I say, this is only kind of uh, to give you an idea of, of my process and my thoughts and the way that I've worked, but you may want to do something different. The rivet detail that you see I simply use Diamante um, craft products that I bought from a pound shop um, and they do have a hexagonal Diamante shape about them but to me in my eyes anyway they look like hammered rivets so I was quite happy with the effect that they gave they come on a sheet and they're self adhesive I took them off rubbed them down uh, to take away the glue that they'd put on there so that I could super glue them in place I've done the same around the door and around the front plate here and you know around appropriate places now as I say I think they look like hammered rivets you might want to use something different that's okay the next feature some of you might find a little silly a little frivolous but it was just something that amused me I thought that um, uh, a furnace would have a maker's name on it so uh, I had these letters that uh, come on a sprue and you cut them out and I, I did that and, and then stuck them onto um, the front here in um, with super glue and I touched them up with some brass coloured paint just to bring them out a little bit and it's NOES um, and for those of you that haven't worked it out yet it's Nightmare on Elm Street uh, not very imaginative, I know. Uh, I never was very good at. I never was very clever or very good at uh, crosswords. But there you go. The date uh, is the date of the film, and I've just reversed the last two digits. So instead of eighty four, it's it's forty eight. As I say, some of you might find that a bit daft, but I quite like the idea. The pipes that you see, yes, folks, this is a bendy straw, but it's a very wide bore bendy straw if I put my little finger up there you can see give you a rough idea it, it's maybe half an inch in um, bore 
And uh, some of you might say, well, yes, okay, I can see that's a bendy straw. That's fine, you may want to use something different. But I felt that once it was weathered and I had these uh, brace pieces um, fitted and washed and etc., I, th I think it looks reasonably okay. But if you want to use something different yourself, then, then that's fine. The pipe here is styrene tubing, again, painted and then washed and weathered. And the same thing with the, the pipe at the side here. Uh, this is just styrene tubing again. Washed and weathered. Uh, the wheel that you see there is a cannibalised piece from a German anti-aircraft vehicle. Uh, cannibalised and stuck on there and just touched up in red. And, and you know, it looks like a valve wheel. I just think it looks reasonably effective. The... Uh, shovel that you see there i'm not sure i'm going to keep it there just yet i haven't decided but this is a an action man item that i uh i just painted and weathered and um, added a different shaft to it looks okay i'm not sure if i'm going to keep it there or not i haven't decided yet it's not stuck down the uh bag of coal here again i'm not sure where that's going to be and if i'm going to keep it again it's not stuck down um, but anyway i just thought it looked uh, reasonably effective i'll talk about the coal effect in a minute just a little bit of rag there again not stuck down but uh, just a bit of set dressing the only thing that is stuck down that i quite like is this box this crate it's uh, it's a resin item that um, I initially painted black and then dry brushed with light greys, whites, um, and um, light browns, you know, just to give it a sort of weather beaten look. Another pipe in the corner there again, it's a uh, styrene tubing, and I've added brace pieces to it again to make it look a little more authentic. The chain that you see is, uh, th this is chain that I, I'll always pick this stuff up whenever I find it. it you, you can find it with novelty items, you can find it in costume, jewellery, etc. Whenever I find it, I've, I always hang on to it because it's uh, it often comes in useful. And um, uh, this was just simply uh, soaked in super glue and then hung so that it would, it would hold its shape and keep its rigidity a little bit. And then give them washes of browns and gunmetal and um, so on, just to make it look a little more authentic. Wrapped around the, the tube in here. There's a little bit more detail there that I've added just for a bit of set dressing. There's another bit of chain there, but I've just built this kind of hook um, apparatus here. Um, just to add a bit of uh, atmosphere. The string that you see is just very coarse string um, that uh, again soaked in super glue so that it would retain its shape and rigidity and uh, then painted and then dry brushed to give it a, a kind of more look of rope than of, of string and I think it looks reasonably okay. I've got up here, I've got a rat, you can't see him that clearly, so you want to adjust the lighting slightly. Um, he's an Aurora item that came with Dracula or Frankenstein or the Wolfman, I'm not sure who, but anyway. Um, he was just um, stuck together, painted black, and then um, weathered, and detail picked out in pink his tail his paws his nose and his ears and uh, he's also got whiskers you can't see them very clearly on this video but he's got whiskers and I used um, dry fern material this type of thing that's used by um, flower arrangers and so on and I just cut very small parts of that off pieces of that off super glued it to his face and then painted it and as I say you can't see on this video very clearly but they look reasonably effective it looks quite good you you know there, there is a sort of definite um, simulation of whiskers there uh, to the coal effect that I've achieved here is uh, simply by using cat litter it comes from one of our 
high street supermarkets it's their own brand lots of cat litters are not any good for model making because they're far too absorbent this one actually isn't very absorbent so it's not very good for use as cat litter but it's uh, useful for model making i've used this stuff for rubble and all kinds of things and um what i did was i just put a blob of um pva and then sprinkled this this stuff over it and let it all go hard and dry and then you up with you end up with these plaques then and they can be cut and shaped then once they've gone hard uh, once you've got the shape you then spray them black which is what I've done here the coal effect that you see in there is just you know this cat litter that I'm talking about and then it just uh, dry brush with glosses of reds and yellows and whites just to give it a glowing effect the lighting effect you see at the back there also enhances it you can't see it very clearly on this video but it does give a very good effect uh, it, um, it it kind of give a glowing effect to the inside of the um, furnace I've stuck some cotton wool uh, in front in, in sort of the middle of the furnace there to cover the bulb a little bit uh, and um, there's also a little bit that I've stuck on the front of the uh, in front of the bulb itself as well uh, just to hide the, the bulb a little bit um, but it does give a very good it's a shame you can't see it very effectively on here but it does give a good glowing effect to the inside the, the light shines around the cotton wool which was soaked in PVA and then sprayed black to stiffen it and um, and it gives a good glowing effect to the inside of the furnace and looks quite authentic okay so lastly then the just a, just a detail at the back I mentioned in the previous part about this aperture that I'd cut in the in the back of the wall of the base to house uh, the um, lighting effect so I've got this hatch that I, I put in the back of the furnace uh, it's for access so that I can access this light so that it can be taken in and out switched on and off batteries changed as necessary and so on and there is the um, bit of cotton wool stuck in the front there that I told you about again soaked in PVA till it goes hard and then sprayed black and stuck on there and it just hides the bulb a little bit from from the front uh, so it's not too obvious but it, it, it looks it does look very effective a uh, little hatchway here I just built into the back of the furnace um, just for that, that very reason so that it can be the batteries and the can be changed and the, and the light itself can be taken in and out okay so that's about it for this part um, in the next part which will be the final part Freddie will make his debut and you'll get um, a better idea of of how it's ultimately going to look um, I hope this has been useful and helpful to some of you to give you ideas you don't need to necessarily use these techniques these methods but there might be something that you can you can adopt here or or um, um, take advantage of uh, for your own projects it doesn't have to be a freddy furnace of course it might be something else that you want to build but it just gives you an idea of um, what can be achieved and um, the process that I use to, to get to where I am. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time. Bye for now.